so we are continuing the discussion of molecular basis of inheritance so i hope you have seen the previous videos and we are discussing the process of transcription a very very important part of the central dogma of molecular biology a very important concept to understand the expression of the gene so that means this is the process of transcription that will be pivotal that will be absolutely critical to understanding the molecular basis of inheritance so that is why again at the beginning of the video i will strongly request you to please go through the videos again and then read your ncrt textbook meticulously and try to analyze what is being written in the ncrt so that the basic concepts are crystal clear and therefore our dependence on the cramming of the facts is reduced because if you understand the subject then there is no need of cramming so in the previous two videos what we have done we have just given you a basic idea of the transcription that means we have discussed the process of what is called as transcription and this is the 6.5 this is the first video that carries the information on these two paragraphs of your ncrt in the second video i have described 6.5.1 the transcription unit and now we are looking at the transcription unit and the gene so that means we will be trying to define gene in more realistical terms so this is the process this is the point this is the paragraph of discussion in this uh, particular video which is 6.5.2 transcription unit and the gene so a short video on this so uh, now we understand a lot of basics so we are saying what me what is meant by transcription unit we already know this and we are trying to define or understand the word better that what exactly is gene so i begin with a point that i told you in the other videos as well one that the process of formation of an rna molecule on the template of the dna is called as transcription this is number one number two i told you that all major cellular rnas that is the messenger rna the transfer rna and the ribosomal rna they are transcribed on the template of dna we will we will have an another video on these different types of rna molecules so just just the basics of the rna molecules i will discuss in another video but please understand that mrna is formed on the template of dna tRNA is also formed on the template of DNA and rRNA which is ribosomal RNA is also formed on the template of DNA so first and foremost let us think of a gene that for that that carries the code for the transcript that is called as a transfer RNA so we will call it as a tRNA gene so there will be a segment of DNA that carries the sequence of deoxyribonucleotides that is the code for the ribonucleotides that are present on the transfer rna molecule so the transcript is called as trna so please understand there will be some genes whose transcript will be called as transfer rna now this transfer rna the language that is written on the transfer rna it will be a language of ribonucleotides and is not going to be translated so therefore the story ends here so transfer rna genes are transcribed into transfer rna molecules there is no further translation into proteins so we are beginning to understand that gene does not necessarily make a protein so it is not necessary that every gene will be expressed as a protein or a polypeptide that we basically understand the meaning of gene to be so this is the first important thing to understand similarly there will be r rna genes so r rna genes will carry code for ribosomal rna so we will see that this ribosomal rna has a catal as a as a catalytic as well as a structural role so we will see in another video so that means there will be some segments of 
DNA that will be transcribed into what is called as ribosomal RNA. This would be made up of deoxyribonucleotides and this will be made up of ribonucleotides. Again, this thing, this particular language is not going to be translated into a polypeptide or protein. So, we are seeing that a gene is not necessarily coding for a polypeptide or a protein. There may be transfer RNA genes, there may be ribosomal RNA genes and they are making something that this, this something is the transfer RNA molecule and the ribosomal RNA molecule but this particular thing is not getting translated. So, we are saying that gene may code for transfer RNA or ribosomal RNA and they will not be translated. So, this is one thing that I have understood about the gene. Again, when we look in the context of the protein synthesis, so if we say that gene is actually, gene is actually expressed as a polypeptide, so gene is actually uh, expressed as a polypeptide then we will say that the transcript would be called as mRNA that means it will carry a message and this is the message that will be translated into a protein and there would be genes that will be coding for messenger RNA molecules and these are the genes vast majority of our genes are like this that they will carry the information for transcribing into a messenger RNA molecule which gets translated into a polypeptide molecule. I hope this is absolutely clear. So now we are coming to the familiar territory of ours. This is where we are comfortable. This is where from our lower classes we have understood the gene definition to be that it is reflected or expressed into a polypeptide polypeptide molecule. Now please understand not all genes do so. Some genes make only transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA and if if the gene that we think of a gene is it is getting it is getting transcribed into a messenger RNA molecule and that messenger RNA molecule is being translated into polypeptide we call this functional gene as a cistron. So, there is a term that is called as cistron. Cistron will be the functional gene with respect to the formation of a polypeptide. So, that means it is the segment of the DNA that carries information for a messenger RNA molecule that will be ultimately, ultimately translated into a polypeptide. This is what we think of gene basically as. So, I have again understood that gene, if I define a cistron, then I am talking of a, a, a segment of DNA that carries enough code to code for a polypeptide molecule. So, we have seen these two very important things about gene. So, this is a very, very important concept and we will later on when I will discuss the process of transcription and when I will discuss the differences between transcription and the pro in the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic, C uh, eukaryotic uh, cells then we will understand the difference in the genes that are present in the eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells then we were talking then then we will talk about the difference in the cistrons of the two as well but for the time being I have told you one that gene may code for TR RNA and RRNA and does not form any polypeptide. Number two gene which is a cistron a functional a functional definition will be forming a polypeptide. Moreover, moreover when we were discussing the transcription unit we were seeing that the structural gene that carries the actual actual code that is to be transcribed and translated with respect to messenger RNA molecule we know that it is flanked by two other regions one is called as the promoter and the other is called as the terminator and the region like promoter actually regulate the process of transcription because we know that RNA polymerase does 
not directly identify the structural gene it actually identifies the promoter so please understand and we have already seen that it is the location of the promoter in the transcription unit that actually defines the template and the coding strand i will again advise you to see the previous videos for this particular concept so once we see these regulatory regulatory sequences so that means they are regulating some process and actually they are not coding for anything promoter does not code for anything it is simply a regulatory sequence and these regulatory sequences are also sometimes loosely defined as regulatory genes so we can see that it is not necessary that gene will have actually a product there may be a regulatory sequence as we have seen in the cases of promoter so what now we are understanding is that gene may code for something and that something may be a polypeptide and then it the transcript would be a messenger rna and the functional gene will be described as a cistron we will see the entry cases later and it may code for something and not code for a polypeptide but still coding for something and they would be transfer rna molecules and ribosomal rna molecules and we are also seeing that it is not necessary that gene will have a product actually it may simply be a regulatory sequence that may be present on the dna that will regulate the various biochemical processes that are taking place in the cell during the flow of the genetic information from the storage molecule to the proteins so they may actually regulate the process so this is how now we understand gene better we have understood the depths of the term and now we are in a in a better in a better uh, condition to comprehend the actual meaning of gene so summing up the gene may code for something that may be protein then it would be the transcribed into a messenger rna and would be called as a cistron the functional gene and it may code for something but may not be may not be uh, translated into a polypeptide therefore it will be transcribed into a transfer rna or a ribosomal rna molecule and it actually it may not form any product may be simple regulatory sequences <laughs> so this is what this particular section of your ncrt book talks about and please go through your ncrt now you will be able to understand each and every line and in the next videos we will see the actual process of transcription the differences between the eukaryotic and the prokaryotic transcription and we will try to comprehend the meaning of this functional gene which is cistron in a more intricate manner